Hey everyone, it's Josh here. In today's software tutorial, I'm going to be walking you through ClickUp, the one app to replace them all. It's a product management tool, it's a productivity tool, it claims to be the one app that can replace everything. With everything you need to hit the ground running by the end of this video, I'm hoping to equip you with all the skills, tools, and knowledge required to become a beginner, an intermediate, and eventually an expert at ClickUp. So without further ado, let's hit the ground running and jump right into it. Coming to the home screen here, we can see it says the one app to replace them all as it claims. Well, let's see if we can live up to that bold claim. All we gotta do is hit the get started, it's free button. I think this is the biggest of the product management tools that I've gone through and uh, sign up for free already. I'll enter in my email here, hit next, and we'll see what we get. All right, entering full name, email, and choosing a password. So I'll put in my information here and we'll just come up with a really secure password and uh, I won't agree to take marketing emails, so we'll say play with ClickUp. Notice how it says play and not log in or sign up. Oh, I gotta add more secure password. All right, it's gonna say we just emailed you. So this is for verification purposes. Of course, 2265 is mine, so we'll jump right in here. And boom, already we're already looking at a form for taking us through ClickUp and figuring out what exactly ClickUp can do for us. Now, given the fact that I've also been using ClickUp, I know and am well aware of the very, very advantageous features it offers to a variety of skill sets, whether those being, you know, software engineering, business, or anything in general, really. The point with this is that it can be used for, as it says, work, personal, school, pretty much anything. So I'm gonna say in this case, we're gonna use it for personal purposes. How many people am I gonna be working with? For me, I'm just gonna say just me, but my team uses this on a fairly regular basis. So again, at this point, you would be customizing it to whatever you want it to be. And ClickUp is just gonna be figuring things out for you. But don't worry, all the things that you are answering here, you can change later on if you so choose. What solution would I like to start with? Well, considering I'm gonna be going for some personal use, uh, creative design, IT, we'll say IT, and um, we'll hit other. Um, or let me just say podcast radio, sure. Do I use any of these tools? Well, let's just say I use all of them. We'll go through, we'll hit next, and it'll say, lastly, what would you like to name your workspace? Uh, well, I'll just say Josh Workspace. And alrighty, we'll hit the finish button here, and now it says, go and change the world. Very ambitious. And immediately we're gonna be dropped into our home screen here. Now, ClickUp immediately has a video for us with Walter the Wall. Um, we're gonna skip the video quickly, but I encourage you to follow along and actually go through and sign up for this yourself and walk through this process with me. So if you haven't done that already, I'm gonna ask you to stop right here, go sign up using the link below, and then continue and we can get back to this. And even watch this video if you so choose to. But for this, I'm just gonna hit the skip video button here and immediately we're jumping into project two in Josh Workspace, Team Space, Projects. Whoa, this is really overwhelming at first. But don't worry, it actually gets pretty simple once you figure out the basics, but let me walk you through everything. Now what we're looking at here is the simple list view of ClickUp. Now, like many other project management tools, ClickUp has different ways that you can visualize the same information, those being your team, tasks, projects, and more. Now, by default right here, we're looking at things in list view. Now, I'm gonna start from the top down so I take us through it slowly. At the top here, we can see project two. So this is just simply put my project. So uh, project two, if I wanna rename it, I can just click on it and you know rename it to be project Josh. That sounds pretty good. Next to it, we have a couple buttons that we can work through, list settings, add description, add list color, add list assignee, add list priority, and add list dates. Now, what do any of those things mean? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute, but we're gonna simply talk about the tasks portion of this, actually adding tasks. What we see here is we already have a few tasks by default added for us. In progress, we can see task one. It doesn't have an assignee yet. It doesn't have a due date yet. It doesn't have a priority. The status is in progress. It doesn't have any comments. And on the side here, we have some other buttons. Down below in the to-do section, we can see task two and task three. And these are the basics of actually adding tasks to ClickUp and working with columns. Now, from looking at the screen here, you can see that task one has a variety of columns already assigned to it by default. Assignee, basically, whoever you wanna be assigned to that task. In that case, I will add myself because I'm gonna be the one doing task one. But this is also a place where you can actually add and invite members of your team to work on specific tasks. Next to it, we have the due date which if we click on, we can see uh, today, later, tomorrow, this weekend, we can actually go and pick a date. Um, and if I want a specific time with it as well, if I go here and click this, now once I've clicked on the actual date, in the top right hand corner, I can actually add the time. So let's say task one is due tomorrow at, let's say three o'clock and boom, there we go. And all we have to do to make that apply is just simply click out of this. So now we can see due date is tomorrow at 
oh, we can't see that all the way. Well, if we want to extend a column, all we have to do is hover over between two of the columns and you'll see that our icon changes. The mouse icon changes to something and we can simply left click, hold and drag. And now we can customize it to be however we want it. So in this case, tomorrow isn't just a good enough explanation of the due date for me, I actually want to see the time. So now I'm already starting to customize the screen with the columns to be the way that I want them to be. Moving on, we've got priority. Now by default, we have high or urgent, normal, low. Wow, these are some pretty, uh, pretty standard priorities. So let's just say task one, that's an urgent priority. Moving on here, we have status in progress. Now, of course, you can actually manage the statuses that you have on your ClickUp page. Whether you're doing tasks for yourself, tasks for a project, tasks for a team, it really doesn't matter. Understanding the basics of ClickUp and how to actually use and interact with the columns and tasks is paramount to actually going through and understanding the entirety of the ClickUp workspace. Because if you can understand these basics, then it's gonna be pretty easy to pick up things later on down the line. Now, if I actually wanted to go and add my own statuses here, if I didn't want to just have to do in progress and complete, I can go to the top right hand corner here and find add slash edit statuses. Now again, if you didn't find that quickly, all you have to do is click on the status for that task. And then in the top right hand corner here, you can simply hit this add slash edit statuses. Now let's say I want to go and actually add a custom status of my own. I would just go over to the custom tab here. And now it's actually changed so that the tabs we have for the statuses are simply to do in progress and complete. But now we have more buttons to actually go and change things. So we can simply hit add status. Now what's the status for this project? Um, well, well, let's say we had a task that was delayed, a task that was supposed to happen tomorrow at 3 p.m. but actually was gonna get delayed till next week at 3 p.m. So we'd simply type in here delayed. And now if I hit the enter key, I can automatically go ahead and choose whatever color I want for that status. And at this point, I'm already starting to customize ClickUp to be the way that I want it to be. Um, in this case, delayed is not good, so I'm gonna put a red icon here. And we'll simply click out of that. And I think I'm good with those three statuses for now. We'll just stick with the one. I'll go down to the big save button here at the bottom and click it. And there we go. Now it doesn't automatically change it to the new status. So if I want to go and actually apply that status to task one, I have to hover over in progress again. And now we can see that that new task we just created delayed is right there. I'm going to click on that and we can see, ooh, that task is now delayed. Now, if I wanted to actually add a comment for my team or for myself to actually inform myself why that status was delayed, or task was delayed rather, and why this task is now under the delayed status, I can go to the next column in our task and it simply says comments. Now, if we click on this here, we can type in comments. We can add emojis, we can tag people if we want certain members of our team to be informed. So let's say in this case, task one is delayed because there is something that was late, you know, couldn't do it late. And now if I want to actually mention a member of my team so that they get notified that I'm making this change, I can go down here and hit the button that says assign comment as an action item. If I want to assign that comment as something that has to be done. In this case, can't, couldn't do it late isn't really something that's very actionable. So I can go over here and either add an emoji or, you know, record a screen clip or record a voice clip if I'm even feeling so up to it. If I wanted to actually record a voice memo for my teammates to actually inform them why this is late, I could actually go do that. Or let's say there was a memo that came in. This is delayed because an email actually came in. All I'd have to do here is go to the next icon that says add a file and add that file. Now, I also have a couple more options on the right hand side here, just next to send. If I hit these three dots, things like commands and mention a task but we're not gonna do that at this point. For this point, I'm just simply gonna hit, couldn't do it late and just hit the send button by hitting that purple send button here. Now we can see that I've posted at the current time, couldn't do it late and I have the ability to make some changes. Things like the summarize comment, things like edit, add comment as action item or even reply. So let's say I'm another member of my team and I wanna actually reply to this. I hit that reply button and I simply say, okay, boom. Very, very simple, very, very standardized comment system. Um, and I can like things, very, very simple stuff. So we'll move on from that. Let's get into what makes ClickUp unique and why it offers so much flexibility for somebody wanting to do things on a project management scale, personal scale, et cetera. I'll just simply click out of here for comments. Now, what if I actually wanted to add some more information? I mean, by default, we have assignee, due date, priority, status, comments, but I wanna have something new, like how much money that task cost 
or maybe something else. If I go to the right hand side here next to all of my columns and I hover over this plus icon, I can see the button that says add a column. And if I click that, whoa, we get a ton of drop down menus that actually allow us to go and click and add different things. If we wanna add things like phone numbers, a location, say task one was a movie shoot or you know a place, whatever it may be, we can add that. And I'll get into that more in a second because there's some pretty cool things you can do. But essentially looking at this list, I can see all the different ways that I can start to summarize or show the important information about that specific task at one quick glance. So now if I go here and I say checkbox, task one prerequisite task, oh, but if I wanted to add a prerequisite task, here's something I could do other than hitting a checkbox. Now, while you were becoming accustomed to the drop downs and different things in the different fields that you can have access to in here, we can actually go and add subtasks. Say we have other tasks that have to happen before this main task can be officially marked as completed. Well, how do we find them and how do we create them? If we hover over to the left of task one here, we can see that there's a little gray arrow. Now this is just to the left of the circle for the actual task and it says create subtask. So if we click on that, we can see a drop down, and we're already starting to type in a task name. So we could say subtask one and then if we go on to the right here we can see a whole bunch of different options things like pin templates, who are we assigning it to, setting a due date, setting a priority, just the basic information but for the purposes of this I'm just going to hit save and then we can go in and add another subtask saying subtask two for example and hit save. But you'll notice at this stage subtask one and subtask two their circles aren't red like task one is because we can actually apply custom statuses, the very same ones that we can apply to regular tasks, to subtasks as well. If we hover over right here and click on this, we can see to do, in progress, delayed, and complete. So say we're gonna put subtask one in progress and we'll keep subtask two on our to-do schedule. Now, we've already started to add different things and tasks and teams, but if we wanna actually go and complete a task so that it is not seen from the view anymore, we wanna hide it completely. Well, what we can actually go and do is if task one is fully complete, we can go and click on this thing that says delayed and go down to the bottom here and say complete. Now complete is a completely different status from any of the other ones because it actually removes the task from the view. If I click on that here, you'll see It'll say, are you sure about this? Now ClickUp will have helpful pop-ups and reminders. In this case, it's reminding us that we're about to mark a task as completed, even though it has a couple subtasks under it that aren't complete yet. Thank you ClickUp for reminding me. I'll hit cancel here and I'll either make sure that these are complete or at least marked as completed so that ClickUp doesn't have to prompt me. But it's a helpful reminder so you don't actually forget about the things that you need to do. Subtask one will say complete and we can see it's gone from the view. Subtask two, I can do the same thing, gone from the view. And now if we go and hover over task one again from delayed, we can set that as complete. Awesome stuff. Now, where did those subtasks go? And if the information is so important that I need to see it later, how do I ensure that it's not just poof, gone for the void? Now, this is the nice thing about ClickUp because it doesn't actually go ahead and permanently delete the tasks if you complete them. It simply hides them so you can focus on more of what's important. Going to the top right hand corner here, we can see things like search, hide, customize, and all of these things really go into the fact that we have complete customization for whatever we wanna do with ClickUp. Now, if I click on this button that says hide right here, and we can see it's gonna either show or hide the filters. Now, by default, they were shown there, but I can hide them if I click on that again. But if we click that button again and we can see over here, we're already starting to see some filters for how we're seeing the tasks. By default, we have them grouped by status, but we can actually group them by a couple different things. Say you wanted to group them by assignee. Say this was a very small team, say 10 people, and you didn't want to have them grouped by if they were in progress or delayed or whatnot. You just wanted to group them by person. Well, we could do that as well. We could group them by priority so that everyone on the team could see what tasks were the most urgent, who is responsible for those tasks, etc. Tags, custom tags that you add in that pertain to certain tasks. Due date. Well, if we want to have everything sorted by due date, we can do that as well. Task type and custom field. Now, custom field is something I'm not going to go too, too deep in on this, but essentially with custom fields, you can add more fields than what are normally seen in that initial drop down list that I showed you earlier. If I click on it here, right now we don't have any real custom fields, but if I hit on the add custom field button, we can type in any field name. So say I wanted to type in 
um, cost per task. And that was the name of my custom field. This is something I could apply as a column. And the field type, I want to have it as is either drop down, rating, labels, people, date, or checkbox. Now, in this case, obviously, I want to have it actually just be uh, a label so that I have different options to choose from. Or if I wanted to just simply set it as a date, checkbox, person, drop down, etc., we have those options available to us as well. But I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to simply hit the cancel button and we're not going to add that custom field. But we also have things, if I go to the right of that group status, seeing things like subtasks. Say you don't want all of your subtasks to be hidden from view. We can go and hit this button and change it from subtasks collapse all to subtasks expand all or subtasks as separate tasks. Now, the difference between collapse all, expand all, and as separate tasks are pretty simple to understand. If I go back here and we do the same thing we did earlier, we hit the expand subtasks button and add a new subtask under here. Now, again, it is going to be completed because by default, our task one is already set as completed and we'll say subtask one and I hit save here. Now we can actually go and see what it looks like to have those different subtask views. So for right now, I'm gonna click on subtasks once completed and we're gonna actually go and change that back to to do. Uh, but whoa, where did subtask one go? Well, it's still incomplete because you actually have it still as a completed subtask. So if I change that back to to do, again, now we have task one and subtask one. But where did this subtask go? Well, if we click on this here, and we go back up to the collapse all, we can see that if we hit expand all, it changes the view a little bit. Now, task one and subtask one are both visible at the exact same time. Now, if I actually went ahead and went back up here and changed it from expand all to as separate tasks, now subtask one isn't gonna be seen as something that is underneath that can be hidden for, of task one. Simply, it is its own tasks. Even though, yes, it is a subtask and it still directly relates to task one, it's now separate. I know that might be a lot to take in, but understanding these key fundamentals about ClickUp makes it much, much easier for you to actually go and understand the rest of the platform. Because by understanding these simple features, you are getting the basics for how to edit things, create things, you know, delete things, uh, but how would you delete things? We've seen a couple of the things like creating new tasks and subtasks, but if we wanna edit certain pieces of information or delete certain pieces of information, how would we do that? Well, this is the cool thing about our tasks. Now, we're gonna ignore our complete tasks, but I don't really wanna see them anymore. So how would I hide those from the view? Well, if we go back to the, our purple headers here for our filters and we go over to the show closed, I'm gonna take that off. I don't wanna see these completed subtasks anymore and we click off of that, and now we are no longer seeing closed tasks. Now closed in this case simply is the same thing as completed, which as I mentioned earlier, is its own kind of status. Again, if to remind you, if we hover over task two, we can see that actually between delayed and complete here, there's actually a solid line. Very thin, very hard to see, but there is that solid line. This will show you that complete, which is always gonna be at the very, very bottom of your tasks, actually changes things and can hide it from the view. This is different from the regular statuses that you have by default and the ones that you will create yourself if you want a little bit more customization. So back to here, if we go and look at our task one and in this case, task, subtask, I don't want subtask one anymore. It's, it's gone, it's, it's in the way, I don't want it. Uh, I just wanna get it out of here. So what I can do is I can actually hover over the name and right click. And now you can see we have a whole bunch more options that weren't previously available to us. Things like rename, we can rename the task we want to, add to, convert to, task type. Now this is a new feature. I'm not actually too sure what task type does. Maybe I'll learn myself in a little bit. Uh, duplicate, if we wanna actually go and duplicate subtask one. If we click on the duplicate task, it'll ask us what we wanna copy over. Um, in this case, I don't wanna actually duplicate that. So we'll go back and to get back into that. Once again, you just right click on the task. We'd see things like send email to task, merge, move, dependencies, templates, archive, delete, and most importantly, sharing and permissions. Now this allows and allows you the customization to actually go and change who has permission to view certain tasks. In our view currently, because we haven't invited any team members, it's really just me at the moment. So if I go over sharing and permissions here, we can see that if I actually wanna share this task with my team, I can simply go and invite them by name or email. Typing in their name in here, you know, whatever that may be at gmail.com 
and then invite them here and click on that. Now it'll say members get access to all public items in the workspace. So we'll exit out of this here, but going back to that, if I actually want to delete it, we actually go down to the bottom here and we hit the delete button. And now subtask one is completely gone. And we can always add new tasks by looking to the top right hand corner here where we have our purple button that says add task. We can type the task name in, we can type slash for a list of commands, or we can, wait, type slash for a list of commands. What's that? Now this is where ClickUp gets really, really cool. If we actually hit the slash button for list of commands, we can see that there are so many actions within the actual task name, description, or columns themselves. We can see things like assign to me, add a watcher, somebody who isn't assigned to the task, but is meant to see all the updates that happen to it. Priority, due date, a lot of overlap with the column names that we have earlier, start date, status, tags, move, subtask, positions, and advanced blocks, template. Now that's a little bit more advanced, so maybe we'll save that for a future video. But in this case, let's say I wanna actually add an attachment. I click on this and I can go and browse a file that I actually wanna to attach to this name or actually the description, or actually a column. Well, all of these things allow me to actually customize it the way I want it to be customized. How and when do I wanna see certain pieces of information pertaining to the actual task? If I wanna see certain pieces of information strictly on the column side of things, I can do that. If I wanna see them in the actual name, well, I can do that as well. But most often, of course, you're gonna be seeing it in the description of the task. But how do you see more information about a task? Well, if it wasn't obvious from watching other videos about project management, all you gotta do is left click on the task name and you will go right into the task. And again, this looks a little bit overwhelming, but really the task view is just showing you everything that you've already seen. It's showing you all the columns, it's showing you the comments, all the custom fields that you've created, the attachments. This is the place where you can view everything that we've just talked about up until this point, but now in one easy to spot location. Now, if we've got things like status to do, assignees empty, dates empty, priority empty, we can track it all from this spot. And if we even wanna track the actual time portion of things, clicking on start timer and end timer, how long it takes us to do a task, we have that option available to us as well. Now, this gets to something really cool about ClickUp is the fact that ClickUp has AI integrations. Now let's say I wanted this task two to be about creating a video about ClickUp. So if I say um, create a video about ClickUp, we simply type that in. Uh, now, of course, we've got the video description in here and you know it's all here or the task description rather. Um, but how do we actually go and make AI do that for us? Well, going back from here, we can see that there was a little bit of information that was available to us if we go ahead back out of the task. And if I go to a, a new task here, for example, one that we haven't touched yet, instead of adding description, we can actually hit the button write with AI. Now, if we click write with AI, it will ask us, what do we want the AI to write about? Now, if I hit add description, it tells ClickUp that I actually just wanted to write the description myself. But if I hit write with AI, it tells ClickUp that I wanna actually write this with AI. So um, what do I want the AI to write about? Write a description about creating a video for YouTube about ClickUp. And now we can see that already ClickUp AI is going to work here and it's automatically creating a video description for us based on this. We can do things like insert, edit inputs, copy, or ask it to try again. Now, these are obviously powered by GPT-3 and GPT-4, so you've got many of the same capabilities available in ChatGPT and other platforms like that. So now we can go on and actually go and hit the insert button if I'm satisfied with this video description or tell it what to do next. So I'll hit insert and boom, we've got a description already put in there for us. That's pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna let you play around with this at a later date and of course, feel free to go through and test out the different things. But the next part that I wanna to get to is the left-hand side of the screen menu. Now, to click out of this and exit out of this, I just gotta go, oh, wait a second. What's on the top part here? Well, actually, something you don't see from the main dashboard screen, unless you're looking at the left-hand side and diving deep and customizing it, is the actual place where all of your information is held. This being your team space, your projects, the individual project itself, and then on the right side, the date it was created, sharing it, favoriting it, minimizing it, etc. All of your basic UI to actually go and interact with this task. But for this point, I'm just gonna hit close window 
And now we're gonna put our attention to the left side of the screen here. Now, when we put our attention to the left side of the screen here, we're gonna see that in the top left-hand corner, it says Josh Workspace, free forever, one members. We've got things like our settings, upgrade apps, manage users, that's pretty simple. But what we're gonna turn our attention to is the five different options here, starting with home. If we click on home here, we can see, good evening, Josh. And from this, we have a dashboard of all of the information required for us to actually go through and use ClickUp. This is where all the information pertaining to all of our tasks, teams, documents, more will be found. If we go to our next section here, inbox, this is the place that is pretty much our notifications. Now, ClickUp actually recently had a rebranding of their UI that they upgraded to called ClickUp 3.0. And that actually took the notifications tab and changed it to simply the inbox. Makes things easier, makes things simple. This is where you can find any mentions on your teams, tasks, updates, statuses, if a due date is running overdue, and you have customization over all of this. Moving on to our documents, we have here different documents. If we look into the project notes, by default selected and put in the project section and the date updated 25 minutes ago, I click into it and we see, whoa, want to see some magic? It's just telling us about the ClickUp AI, but we have places to actually add some information. We can choose whether to put a blank page, to add a new table, column, ClickUp list, and sub page. This is very similar to some of the tools that you've seen like Notion, but it has more customization in that it integrates perfectly with all the project management features and other productivity features ClickUp already has built in by default. Now, moving on out of here, we're going to click out of this and actually click out and from there, we're gonna go down to the dashboards page. And this is where we can see our first ClickUp dashboard. Now, as it says at the bottom there, create a visual representation of your work. This is for creating things like graphs and other presentation materials based on the tasks, teams, and information that you have already set up in ClickUp. Um, you can see things like your recently opened dashboards will show here, favorite dashboards, etc. cetera. Uh, if I wanna create a new dashboard, what I'll find is I can see using a template, at this point we can see, okay, template setup, we'll click the team space and we'll select project Josh and we'll hit apply. And there we go. We have chat, docs, files, and links, our task list, pretty much viewing all of our information, but in a much nicer way. Say we had to present our information to stakeholders or other people, depending on what your specific use case is, you can visualize your information in different ways that make it easier to see for you and your team. This makes meetings for me much, much easier because I can take whatever I've been working on during the week and actually compile it and make it nice for the team so that when I'm explaining it, it's a lot less daunting than if I were just gonna go through a million different slides in PowerPoint. Wrapping things up here, down at the bottom, we have our spaces. Now, ClickUp is cool because you can actually create different spaces that are different sections of the ClickUp platform that are dedicated to different teams, different projects, tasks, you name it. Now, for me and my team, we have different spaces where we store pieces of information depending on what it pertains to. Is this the accounting section? Is this the software engineering section? Is this the CRM section? We have different sections here called spaces segmented off that allow us to store and organize our information in different ways. Now, by default right now in my team space, I've got my projects, I've got Project Josh, Project One, Project Notes, etc. If I wanted to go and create more of these, I can just go up to the top right here and hit new space. Next to it, we can actually go and search. And then we have a three dots saying space settings. This is where we can see things like managing our spaces. And if we go ahead and create a new space here, we'll say Josh's space. Hit next, it'll ask us for a space description, color. We can actually go and customize it. We'll put a music icon there. We'll hit next. We can say, is this space going to be public or is it going to be private? Well, in my case, I'm gonna set this to be only private. And at this point, I could actually go and invite members of my team to actually come through. So I hit next again. I can choose the custom task statuses I want. I can enable what click apps. And click apps are essentially the different ways of naming the columns. So priority, custom fields, email, multiple assignees, et cetera, to customize it to be my own. I can see the default settings for views. What does that actually mean? Well, before we finish this off, I wanted to finish off with the coolest feature of ClickUp. So we'll finish creating our space here and we'll hit create space. And now we have Josh's space in the default list view. But what does it mean to have the default list view? 
Well, simply put, ClickUp allows you to view and store all your information in different ways. Now, by default, it's set to list view, but we have so many different ways to view the information and customize it to ourselves. We have things like the board view, now, this isn't going to make a lot of sense if I don't actually have any tasks created yet. So we're going to go, go over to Project Josh here, click back into it and go from the list view to the board view. Now we can see it looks much more like a Trello board. If you're familiar with that, we have things in bulletin board view. And if I wanted to drag something over, all I would have to do is hover over the task I wanted and click, hold down left click and drag. So now if I wanted to move task two from to do, to in progress, to delayed, to complete. I can simply move things around. Now, depending on what your preference is, this might be the view for you. Or if you're me, list view is your favorite. Or you can view things in calendar view, seeing when things are due. Or we could see things in table view, if that's your right up your alley. We could see things in Gantt view, if you're working off of timelines here. Or if we wanted to add more views, we have so many things like timeline, team, table, mind map, workload, activity, map, whiteboard, doc, chat, embed, and form. And there is a lot to go through here. So I'm not going to go through all of this right now. I, you, I think you get the idea with this pretty much based on however you want to customize ClickUp, you can create custom views, custom tasks, custom teams, custom projects, and more. ClickUp truly is meant to be the all in one productivity platform. And it does that pretty well. I would say that it accomplishes that task pretty well because with all of this, I am able to effectively manage all the stuff for my team. Those being my teammates, my projects, my comments, my communications. I mean, even today, one of my team members made a few comments on my actual section, my actual space, strictly meant for bug fixes and updates. And again, I implore you to go through and play around with ClickUp, create some tasks, change the view, start to get a feel for how exactly ClickUp is going to work for you because everyone has a different experience. And that is what makes ClickUp just so great is the fact that it allows you to customize it to be however you want it to be more so than what you would see on other platforms because it's not just strictly a project management platform. It's not just strictly a productivity platform. Really, it's a platform that offers you all the skills and all of the different features required to customize it to be whatever you want it to be. Do you want to write documents? Great, ClickUp's got that. Do you want to create projects? Great, ClickUp's got that. It's got all of that and more. And that brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed watching me walk through the basics of ClickUp and are now a little bit more acquainted with it than you were before watching this video. I hope throughout this video, you were starting to think about the different ways that ClickUp can actually work for you. And you can customize it to be whatever you want it to be, whether you want it for your business, for school, or just for some personal use and taking notes. ClickUp really has everything that a lot of other project management softwares don't actually offer. And I think it lives up to its name to be the app to replace them all. And at this rate, it certainly is going to. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.